Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a review of the iPad Pro 2017 in the 10.5 inch with the Apple Pencil and the app Procreate. And this is going to be from an artist perspective. And just to be clear, this review is not going to be very technical. It's going to be from the perspective of a traditional artist who doesn't really get digital art, but I've always kind of wanted to get into digital art, but I've always really wanted to try drawing directly on the screen because I've had pretty bad luck with drawing with tablets and mouse in the past. So that's why I jumped at the chance to getting the iPad. And also to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. I did pay for all of these items with my own money and all of the opinions in this video are my own. So first I'll just quickly show you a close up of the actual Apple Pencil. It's a nice size. It's about the same size as a full size color pencil before you start sharpening it. Um, and it looks a lot like a polychromos color pencil to me. That's why I end up showing that as a comparison later. But it's a lot fatter and thicker and heavier um, than those. And it's pretty simple. It has a tip that can be replaced at the bottom. And at the top, you can, um, when you uncap it, there's the lightning connector thing that you use to pair it with the iPad and also to charge it. Like I said, this is not going to be a technical review. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, overall, I really like the Apple Pencil. It feels pretty good in your hands, nice and smooth, and there's not too many complaints, but I will go into more details about my review of the Apple Pencil later. So this is the case that I got to go with my iPad Pro. I got the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, and this case, the Targus case, is actually perfect for it. I really, really like this case. I've had other iPads in the past and other cases, and this one's my favorite so far. It has like everything I want. It has a nice rubberized edge around the actual iPad to give it some nice protection from falls, and the portfolio works really, really well and has a really nice feel with the fabric, and there is a loop in the back to hold your Apple Pencil, which is really nice, but that's probably the only downside to this one is the Apple Pencil can kind of sometimes slip out a little bit, so I'm not a huge fan of that, but there's not too many other iPad cases out there that have actually done that better, so it's only a small complaint, otherwise I really, really like this case. And this is the actual Procreate app. I really like this app overall, but when I first started using it, I was really frustrated, to be honest. The first day I opened it up, I tried to use my Apple Pencil, I tried to make marks on the screen, and just nothing was really coming out. It seemed like I had to press really, really hard to get anything to come up. And then I was kind of afraid that I was going to end up scratching my screen or something. Um, so it was a little frustrating as a first time newbie, but after a while of just like playing around with it, I finally figured out how to get stuff to work a bit or it was dumb luck. I'm not sure which, but I finally got it to make some marks and started to just kind of mess around with stuff. I also watched quite a few YouTube videos which I found really helpful. A few of them were really, really helpful. So I'll link those in the description below if you need that. Um, and yeah, I know I just kind of messed around and tried to get a feel for it for a few days and then tried to start a drawing. Overall, the Procreate app, I like it a lot. I've seen a lot of people say they uh, find it a little too toned down, like there's not as many functionalities as maybe an experienced digital artist would require. But as a traditional artist who's not really experienced with digital art, I kind of like that it's a bit toned down. Um, it's a bit more like just clean and there's not too many confusing functions because when I try to use programs like Photoshop, I just, I can't even deal. There's too much, there's too many steps to get stuff done and I, I just don't like that. So I think it's a nice starter app for me. I like it a lot. The only problem I've had with Procreate, of course, is of course, like I said, that it took some time for the pen to make a mark and I sometimes still have that issue, but not too often. And I, of course, it could be my inexperience. Um, but also, if you use it for a little too long, the iPad will actually get hot. And I've actually never heard people say that. In fact, I've heard people say the opposite. But for me, my iPad will definitely get hot when I use Procreate for too long, which is really annoying. So I have to try to limit myself and turn it off um, after a while. The Apple Pencil itself is pretty nice. I like it a lot. I mean, it was very easy to start getting used to and to use. Um, my biggest complaint though would be the battery life. Now, I don't know if my actual Apple Pencil is faulty or not, but I found, especially ever since they upgraded to ISO 11 for all the devices, that I have to charge my Apple Pencil every single day, whether I use it or not. And that's a problem. <laughs> like, I don't see how that could not be a problem. That just seems like a huge problem. So I'm actually planning on taking this into Apple to see if they can test the battery and see if it's okay or not. Um, and hopefully it's not okay because I really hope that that's not normal. Um, otherwise, it's 
I, I have heard people say the, I think the tag phrase is that with the Apple Pencil, it only takes 15 seconds to charge it for half an hour. And I find that not to be true for my pencil, at least. It takes like uh, 30 seconds to get maybe a five minute charge. The one time I had it really, really low, and otherwise it takes like a good 45 minutes to charge it via the iPad. And if you use the little connector to charge it directly on the um, cable, the lightning cable, um, then it's a bit less awkward because it's not sticking at your iPad, but it took probably like five hours to get a full charge that way. So like I said, I don't know if this is normal. It might just be a faulty battery in my Apple Pencil, but if it is normal, that's not great. The feel of the Apple Pencil on the screen is very slippery, but I kind of got used to it and I'm kind of okay with it, especially since I am a little bit afraid of the screen scratching over time. Other people have said to use a screen protector so that you're not so worried about that, but honestly, I've never used screen protectors for Apple devices before, so I'm kind of reluctant to do that. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like I got used to it over time. Otherwise, it feels good in the hand and it works really well. I've only noticed a tiny bit of drag sometimes um, when I'm actually using it and otherwise I in general like using the Procreate app getting used to it took time took some time I'm still getting used to it and I got used to the Apple Pencil pretty quickly and overall I feel as a traditional artist that I'm still not 100% comfortable with digital art but I'm much more capable of finishing something and feeling comfortable with it with the iPad Pro plus the Apple Pencil and Procreate than I've ever been with any other combination. Like last time I had a Wacom Bamboo Fun or is it just regular bamboo tablet? It was only very cheap and I've tried out Paint Tool Sci and also Photoshop and I had better luck with Paint Tool Sci but uh, it still wasn't something where I could get all the way through a drawing. I would always get really frustrated and give up because I just find like digital art just takes so much longer and I don't know what I'm doing and <laughs> somehow like it just doesn't work out as well. Also, the option to undo and redraw something is way too tempting and I end up like fixing things like crazy, which is not very good because like I just keep fixing things until I've been working on it forever. It's like I'll never finish it because I've just kept fixing it and fixing it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that's gonna take time to get used to, but I definitely feel like using this combination of materials is the best chance that I've ever had. And I don't think I've ever actually fully finished a digital piece before using the iPad Pro and Procreate. Um, everything else I usually give up in the line art stage. So I've actually finished quite a few and I think I'm getting slightly better each time, but I also feel like it, it definitely takes time. Like I definitely notice that towards the end of each drawing, I will get frustrated and I'm just kind of like, is this over yet? <laughs> I don't really want to put as much detail into my digital art as I would my traditional art either because it just seems really tedious. And I find that my digital art is a lot stiffer looking than my traditional art. Probably also because like I'm just not used to the medium and I feel like it, it, it's just it's more difficult to get used to for sure. But it, I've definitely had the highest chance to get used to it using this than any other method of digital art. If that makes sense. I hope I'm being clear and I hope I'm not repeating myself too much. Uh, so this, the first drawing that I showed was my most recent one that I tried to show um, from the side. Um, so you can kind of see how I'm using the Procreate app and then my battery died. So I just showed you the Procreate um, video thing, which is the really cool function of Procreate is that they record a video for you and you don't really have to do much um, to actually have that video and post it. Like you don't have to, um, you don't have to turn it on and pause it or anything like that. It just automatically gets recorded, which I think is really nice. Um, and this one that I'm showing now is the ballerina drawing, I guess. <laughs> and she's a, she was my first ever drawing that I did on Procreate. So you can see a slight difference. I feel like this one was a bit looser because I couldn't figure out how to do clean lines. So I just went with some very, very scratchy lines. Um, so if you zoomed in, it would look like a complete limp mess, but it zoomed out, it looks a whole lot better. And I wasn't sure how to do things back then, so I ended up having to color things multiple times. And then everything came out really light and kind of the wrong color, so I fixed that a bit later. So yeah, all definitely learning curves, lots and lots of learning curves. The other thing I really like about the iPad Pro is that I can actually do, I forget what they call it, it's like a multitasking type function where you can have one program on one side of the screen and another program on the other side of the screen 
fine at the same time. I use that like crazy and you can actually use that with Procreate too. So I'll put Procreate on the right side because I draw with my right hand and then I'll put like YouTube on the other side and watch YouTube videos while I'm drawing and it still records the video the whole time so it's like to me that's amazing it's so much fun I end up doing that really late at night while I'm in bed like right before bed um, and it's kind of fun to just be able to sketch wherever you go um, without having to bring paper or worry about it getting like wet or ruined or anything like that and like I had said for me as a traditional artist I've always been curious honestly I've always really wanted to try out a Cintiq but I just couldn't justify it because with Cintiqs it's just like one function if I don't end up being able to figure out how to use Photoshop or paint tool side with it then I've wasted my money and the purchase and it's just gonna sit there and click dust but because I use my iPad as my everyday computer pretty much the only thing I don't do on my iPad is edit videos so everything else I do on my iPad so it's like it was already time for me to upgrade to a newer iPad and that's why I went with the iPad Pro so I could also try out the Apple Pencil and it was pretty successful. I'm really happy with it. I've been really enjoying it and I feel like this could be a nice gateway to me for furthering my interest in digital art and my skills with digital art. So yeah, I would highly recommend it for anyone who can afford it. If it's feasible for you, I would say go for it and you'll probably not be disappointed unless you're really expecting high amounts of functionality from your um, computer program <laughs> or from your digital program because um, there is a lot of functions that are missing from this but for someone like me who's a beginner I don't really mind I think it's fine so so yeah I really hope that you like this review I hope that you found it helpful and if not I hope that you were enjoyed my first few digital speed paints and if you did then definitely let me know by leaving a comment and then just the comment section down below in the description and give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I post art related videos every week. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.